Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, so first of all, a very happy and blessed new year to all of you. And uh, thank you for giving your constant support to my channel. And recently my channel also crossed uh, 1 lakh views. So I was feeling very happy about that. And um, I hope uh, to continue doing uh, the good work for all of you. So in the new year, I'm starting with the important topic that is gastric carcinoma. So there are various tumors that can be seen in the stomach. So tumors which are arising from the epithelium, they are the carcinomas. And the gastric uh, among the gastric carcinoma, adenocarcinoma is the most common. Then other tumors that can be seen in the stomach are like gastrointestinal stromal tumor or just. just. Then uh, from the lymphoid tissue, we can have the lymphomas. And from the uh, mesenchymal tissue also, we can have the uh, tumors arising but the most common is the adenocarcinoma so it comprises more than 90 percent of all gastric cancers it is predominant in the males then it is seen more common in countries like japan chile costa rica and eastern european countries and it is uh, more common associated with the people of the lower socioeconomic groups it is associated with mucosal atrophy in the stomach and if there is intestinal metaplasia, then there are few risk factors which are important. So for the gastric carcinoma, the risk factors and associations, they are uh, often asked uh, and they are important to know. So most important risk factor is the H. pylori infection. In the H. pylori infection, there can be chronic atrophic gastritis and this can predispose to gastric carcinoma. Then uh, consumption of n nitroso compounds smoked food and which is often used for the preservation so these are the risk factors for gastric carcinoma consumption of tobacco alcohol and uh, there is uh, association of uh, uh, gastric cancer with blood group a generally the individuals they uh, commonly they have blood group a then chronic gastric ulcers can also predispose to gastric carcinoma then polyps neoplastic polyps in the stomach and a disease uh, called Menetrier's disease. In Menetrier's disease, we have the hypertrophy of the gastric rugae, and in the Menetrier's disease is also a predisposing condition for adenocarcinoma stomach. The common sites for uh, gastric cancer, they are the antrum. The lesser curvature is uh, more commonly involved than the greater curvature. While in cases of patients with pernicious anemia, the body and fundus it is more commonly involved now next uh, these were the environmental factors now next are the genetic factors in pathogenesis so there are two types of uh, gastric cancers based on the lorenz classification one is diffuse and other is intestinal so the environmental factors they play more important role in case of the intestinal type while in diffuse type the uh, genetic factors they play a more important role so in the diffuse type of gastric cancer the mutation that is commonly involved is the loss of function mutation in cdh1 gene and because of that there is loss of e catherin so because of the loss of e catherin the tumor cells they are discohesive and they are diffusely distributed next is in the intestinal type the mutations that can be seen are the loss of function mutations in the apc gene then the overactivity of the gene encoding beta catenin then again the silencing genes which are involved in the uh, cell cycle signaling pathways so all these genes they are mutated in the intestinal type and uh, this you should remember that in intestinal type the environmental factors they play uh, important role and uh, they are more important in intestinal than the diffuse type next we come to the morphology of gastric cancer so the gastric cancers they are classified based on the depth of invasion then based on the gross features and based on the microscopy key. so on the basis of microscopy there is a lorenz classification and on, on that basis there are two morphologies of gastric cancers one is intestinal type in the intestinal type the grossly they present in the form of masses bulky masses 
arising from the wall of the stomach and in the microscopy the tumor cells they are arranged in the form of glands so i will make a separate video on the microscopy of gastric carcinoma in the coming days but here you can see in this picture that there is th these are the tumor cells and they are arranged in the form of glands so these are the glands these are the lining cells these are lining cells these are the tumor cells which are lining the these glands so wherever wherever you find a lumen we can make out that they the tumor cells are they are making glands so the glands are seen in the intestinal type of gastric cancer so they can be apical mucin in these tumor cells and the mucin can be seen filling the lumen then second is the diffuse type of gastric cancer so here uh, i told you that there is loss of e catherin because of which there are the tumor cells these are the and these are arranged in a disc cohesive sheets so and the individual cells the individual tumor cells they are having a signet ring cell shape so there is mucin which is present uh, in the cell and this mucin is pushing the nucleus to the periphery so it gets appearance of a signet ring cell so this is uh, how a signet ring looks like and this cell is also having the same appearance so there is a cell uh, let me draw it so there is a there is a cell boundary and there is a mucin inside the cell and it will push the nucleus to the periphery so this is how a signet ring cell is formed so in this picture you can you can see so these are the tumor cells and this is the nucleus so these are the signet ring cells this all these cells these are the signet ring cells again here this is a cell and this is the nucleus so this is the difference in the morphologies of these two types intestinal and diffuse intestinal will have tumor cells arranged in the form of glands and this diffuse type will have diffuse arrangement of the tumor cells and these tumor cells will have will have a signet ring cell morphology so mucin can be seen intracellularly as well as extracellularly in the form of mucin pools also other thing that we see in the diffuse type is desmoplasia so there is intense fibrosis which can be seen uh, in the within the tumor so these are the important points regarding the morphology of intestinal and diffuse type next we come on the uh, second type of classification that is based on the depth of invasion so uh, based on the depth of invasion uh, by the tumor cells into the wall of the stomach uh, it is divided into two types one is early stage gastric cancer second is advanced stage gastric cancer so uh, i have already told you in my microscopy series that uh, the wall of the stomach will have the four layers that is one is the mucosa second is the submucosa then third is the muscle layer and last is the serosa so these are the four layers so when the tumor is involving uh, the mucosa and reaching till the submucosa then it is of the early stage so either it is in the mucosa or in the submucosa it is called the early stage gastric cancer but if it uh, reaches the muscle layer it invades the muscle layer or goes beyond that then it is known as advanced gastric cancer so early gas uh, least stage gastric cancer will have better cure rates than the advanced stage gastric cancer and advanced stage gastric cancer will have more tendency for the local spread as well as the distant metastasis now the third type of classification is based on the gross appearance of the tumor how it is appearing uh, in the gross in the naked eye examination so first is the exophytic type exophytic is it is having it is like a like having a friable and irregular mass so it can be polypoidal or fungating mass it is arising from the wall of the stomach so this is the exophytic growth then second is the in the form of ulcer so in the uh, the next video i will be posting about the <clears throat> ulcer which is seen in the gastric carcinoma so the tum the growth can be ulcero infiltrative so this is the area of the growth and it is forming a ulcer so this is the ulcer and it is infiltrating into the wall so it is a ulcero infiltrative growth and the third kind of growth is diffusely infiltrative so this the tumor cells they are 
infiltrating the wall of the stomach throughout so this will result in the thickening of the wall so it is thickened to about 2 cm so 1 to 2 cm it is thickened so this uh, this is called the diffuse infiltrative growth so these are the this is the classification based on the gross appearance of the tumor again this is the pictures so when the tumor in a uh, tumor cells infiltrate the wall of the stomach diffusely so it is a diffuse infiltrative growth so here uh, the uh, the rugae they get lost and the wall becomes stiff and thickened it, it is of the appearance of a leather bottle so it is called a leather bottle stomach or other name is called uh, linnetus plastica so because it has become rigid like a leather bottle so it is leather bottle stomach or linnetus plastica this is very very important point very very commonly asked in the viva and you should know it it is a must know point and then second is this is the ulcerative growth so ulcerative growth so in the ulcerative growth um, i will cover this in the next lecture that the uh, the margins of the ulcer in a gastric carcinoma they have got the rolled out edges so these are the rolled out edges and the rugae they are randomly distributed while in case of a benign uh, gastric ulcer the rugae they are radiating towards the center of the ulcer so this is important point regarding the ulcer of gastric carcinoma i will discuss in detail in the next lecture and this is the third growth which is the exophytic type so this is kind of fungating growth which is uh, uh, arising from the wall of the stomach so this is the third classification based on the gross features so you should remember and understand all these classification so they are easy to remember next next are the clinical features so regarding the clinical features so in the early gastric cancers they can be they can be dyspepsia dysphagia and they can be weight loss early satiety anemia and gastric outlet obstruction in case the tumor involves the pylorus so the these features they will be seen depending on the stage of the tumor so and depending on the location of the tumor so these uh, points are important to know in case of a problem based question now next we come to the spread of this tumor so the tumor can spread locally in the advanced stages to the duodenum pancreas retroperitoneum and it can they can also be distant metastases to lung liver ovary and sometimes it involves the uh, different sets of lymph nodes and depending on the involvement the special names have been given and these names are important because they will be uh, they are asked in the pg entrance exams so first is if the gastric cancer involves the supraclavicular lymph node the left supraclavicular lymph node it is known as the virtuose node if it involves the periumbilical region uh, then it is known as the sister mary joseph lymph node or nodule then if there is transcelomic spread to single or bilateral ovaries then it is known as the krukenberg tumor if the left axillary lymph node is involved then it is known as irish lymph node and lastly if the tumor reaches the pouch of douglas then it is known as the bloomer shelf so these are the fancy names that can be asked in the pg entrance examination so you should remember all these points next point is the diagnosis so generally if the patient present with the uh, clinical features i told you earlier then the endoscopy will be done and in the endoscopy sometimes the mass will be seen or any growth will be seen so we will take the biopsy from that region so biopsy will be submitted for histopathology and this is the gold standard for the diagnosis of gastric cancer 
in the last i would like to draw out the differences between the intestinal and diffuse variety of gastric cancer so firstly the mutations involved involved are different so there is they can be beta catenin over activity in case of in case of uh, intestinal or they can be uh, decreased apc gene activity then uh, in the diffuse there is cdh1 mutation leading to loss of e catenin this is important and uh, the role of environmental factor it is more in case of intestinal while the role of mutations it is more in case of diffuse then uh, the intestinal variety of gastric cancer it is more common and diffuse is less common intestinal is seen in elderly age group diffuse is seen in young age group then grossly the growth can be exophytic or ulcero infiltrative while i told you that in diffuse the wall is thickened like this and the rugae rugae are lost the wall becomes rigid there is more fibrosis and get it, it uh, gives appearance of leather bottle also known as lenitus plastica here you can see there is the ulcero infiltrative growth with the rolled up margins next there will be uh, gland formation on the microscopic examination in the intestinal variety while in the diffuse variety there will be signet ring cells and presence of dense fibrosis which is called as desmoplasia now this intestinal variety it is more common and it has a better prognosis while the lenitus plastica it has the worse prognosis treatment depends on the stage of cancer and in the early stages surgical resection will be done and in the late stages chemotherapy radiotherapy uh, is done so this was all about the gastric cancer i will post the next video about the uh, differences between the benign peptic ulcer and malignant ulcer and i will also be posting video on how to draw the gastric cancer so i hope uh, you found this video helpful and any question or feedback it is most welcome in the comment section so thank